Howdy. We're going to read a book about verbs. Verbs mean something that you do or something that you are. State of being verbs. All right, here we go. A verb is really the most superb of any word you've ever heard. Verbs tell you something's being done. Roses bloom and people run. Pelicans fly. Kites sail high. So what do kites do? They sail. And rabbits quickly multiply. A vigorous verb is super superb. It tells you fireworks explode or horses thunder down the road. What are they doing? They're thundering down the road. That's another word for running. Of equal attraction are verbs of less action. Have is a verb. These kings have gold. And so is has. She has a cold. Here are verbs we use to link. I am a cat. My nose is pink. My fur feels soft. I sound content. My lifestyle looks most opulent. Is, am, and are is, am, and are, and was, and were, are being, been, and be, and being, been, and be are linking verbs, and as you see, show no activity. Nor do these other verbs that link feel, or sound, or look. More of them are listed as you open up this book. Is, am, and are, and was and were and being been and be are here again. This time you'll see they're called auxiliary along with do and does and did and has and have and had and shall and will and also should and might and may and can and would. They're helping verbs and they are able to form verb phrases as in this fable. While the hare, who should have won, helping verb, was napping in the noonday sun, the tortoise with a steady pace was inching by and won the race. Only a verb can change its tenses, and here are some of the consequences. Irregular verbs leave you aghast by the way they change from present to past. I write, I wrote, or I have written. I bite, I bit, or I have bitten. I sink, I sank, or I have sunk. I shrink, I shrank, or I have shrunk. These are just a very few from a list of more than 52. What? 52. Most regular verbs change easily by adding on an E and D. I paint, I painted, or I have painted. There are three moods to be expressed, and of course it's the verb that does this the best. The imperative mood makes a request. Please take just one and leave the rest. So that's the imperative mood. Please take just one and leave the rest. Or it gives a command, march. This is a whole sentence in one single word. And of course, this can only be done by a verb. The indicative mood just states a fact. We act. We walk. We talk. 
The subjunctive mood expresses a wish or uses the words as though or if. If I were a fish, as though that could be, I'd swim in a beautiful tropical sea. So the subjunctive mood expresses a wish. Whenever I think of the subjunctive mood, I think of the song from Fiddler on the Roof. If I were a rich man. <laughs> That's how I keep it stuck in my head. Verbs have two voices, passive and active. Choose the one you find more attractive. This egg was laid by a hen named Sade. A hen named Sade laid this egg. So the first one was passive. This egg was laid. That's passive. Or a hen named Sade laid this egg. That's active. Each sentence requires one verb or more. She sells seashells at the seashore. If you don't have a verb in your sentence, you do not have a sentence. That's the rule, period. There has to be a verb. And here is a sentence with verbs galore. Lizards leap and pile in a heap and slither and climb and splash and creep and swim and cavort and fall asleep. Oh, they're doing a lot, aren't they? <laughs> Lots of verbs. Now, as an important afterthought about words that are verbs and words that are not, is is a verb, not is not. Put them together, you have is not. Then with a quick converging action, is not becomes isn't. That's called a contraction. Is not become isn't. Use every restraint and never, no, never, please never say ain't. <laughs> As my mom used to tell me when I was growing up, ain't isn't a word. And then I remember telling her, well, it's in the dictionary now. <laughs> and what a beautiful peacock feather, right? That's the book about verbs. I hope you liked it. <laughs>